into the temple here, into the grounds, because as soon as I showed up, a whole family of a little kid and a teenager and a grandma showed up. And I feel like sharing the space with them. So, slowly, slowly, them have their time. Grandma, I'm not into it. I don't know if you can see her out there, sitting in the shade, waiting for everybody else to do their thing. I am intermittently overwhelmed by emotion. Ooh, like right now, being here. <sighs> there were festivals held every year and a big one held every four years that would last for several days worshipping Hecate offering sacrifices of whatever kind garlic black dogs hard to orient myself by the map, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm looking at here, especially. So I imagine the further I go in, perhaps some more it will make sense. Okay, from what I can tell, these are the remnants of the stoa, which were covered walkways. They lined one side of the complex. This might also just be an organized place for excavators to put random stuff. Unless, gosh, that's so, so perfect. Maybe this really was the covered walkways. Can you imagine pillars? rising up from these stones and walking in between them. It's hard for me to envision. And maybe the stoa is over there with all the pillars. It's hard to say. Can we unravel the mystery of Hecate's temple? This is part of a roof that the mouth of the lion is the drain spout. Here is the roof worn away by years and years of water. Gosh, it's cool. Like literally cool to the touch here. Strange. This is not so much. <laughs> and then behind that, there are these arches. That look possibly like seats or walls of some kind. I'm not sure. I'm going to check my oh so useful map again and see if maybe this will help me orient. puts me on the map. This is the farm cottage of Mehmet Osman. It was built, uh, I believe in the early, very early, holy crap, look at this door. That is beautiful. The early 1900s. The stonework on this is just so cool. Sweet place to live. Okay, my friends. 
at that. This here behind me. And there is the altar. Which I am not going to show you as it has offerings, not just from myself, but from other people in there. Which was super nice to see, if I'm going to be completely honest, to know that I'm not the only person in this country who feels connected to her enough to come here and leave an offering. I conceptually knew that wasn't true, but it's really nice to see the physical evidence of it. So, altar, so. church, temple, Tapanai, and the church is the Kilise. Not exactly sure what the difference between the church and the temple would be. If anyone has any insight into that, please let me know. I'm very eager to go through this doorway. As any of you who are familiar with Hecate knows, she is all about doorways, <laughs> liminal spaces, the space between here and there, the way we traverse it, the space between I am this and I am that in the transformation process. It might sound trite to say, but I would have loved to see this place in its full glory, built and not broken, to have participated in the festivals, in the worship of Akate, when people were still familiar with who her, who she was, what she worked with. She's not mentioned very often in the ancient texts. So there's a lot of mystery around her. Most of what I understand about Hecate has not come from books or scholars, but from direct experience. I think that that's how she primarily works. Gods and goddesses tend to be like that. They bring us in in their own time. They send us messages unique to us and our situations and to them and how they are choosing to interact with us, with us at the time. He to spirituality for me is that direct experience. Otherwise, it's just words. This direct experience of Hikate's temple, Hikate's church, Hikate's altar is far and away beyond what I could have anticipated, what I had felt looking at the pictures online. So too it is with spirit. You can hear about everybody else's interpretations of what God means, what the universe means, what it's all supposed to mean. But when it comes right down to it, Being able to look God in the face, to feel God by your side, to feel God inside you. That's, that's the only way, it's the only real way. And that takes getting quiet, being really quiet and listening, paying attention. And when those messages come through, following them. Doing what we're asked to do by spirit in this world. Because it's like any other relationship. If you are speaking to someone, it's 
talking to them, and they kept asking you, help me, help me, help me, help me. And you kept telling them this, this is how you can help yourself. And they never, never listened. How soon would you get tired of that? How soon would you quiet your voice and be like, I'll be here. I'll be here when you want to listen. But until then, you know, you're obviously doing your own thing. And of course, our relationship with spirit is not a relationship with a human being. Spirit is tapped into far greater wisdom than we are. And far less advice that's filtered through human perspective and human experience. But, you know, it's an okay metaphor. Okay, corollary. Spirit is talking. Maybe talking through the avatar of a god or a goddess. Maybe just talking. It's up to you if you want to listen. I've been listening. Look where I am. Not too bad. <laughs>